Hi, my name is Mary Cole with Good Story Company. Uh, this is a very specific video for you. And by you, I mean second person direct address the you as used in story writing. So it can be when you've written your entire story as the you, like you walk through the room, you look over in the mirror. There are books written in entirely second person direct address, and uh, I can pop a link to those in the show notes. There's a roundup on Book Riot that you can find online. Um, there are books that exist that are written in the you. It is kind of like the I, the first person, but it is very second person, and I think the effect there, the intended effect, is to make the reader really feel like they are part of the story. Um, literally, just part of the story. You do this, you do that. For me, if you choose, if you make that storytelling choice, it is a more niche choice, it does work, but there has to be a reason for it, right? There has to be a reason that the whole thing is written as you. And it's gonna be a polarizing choice. There are gonna be agents, there are gonna be publishers that say, you know, I don't understand why this is second person direct address. It's jarring, it like shines a spotlight on me, I don't like it. There are gonna be people who are like, okay, this is risky, this is edgy, I love it. I would kind of do this more in middle grade, more in young adult literary fiction, um, rather than some more, uh, I would say conservative categories, like for example, picture book, we don't see it a lot. I'm thinking of Tammy Sauer's Your Alien, which is written uh, as the you, but the character is a boy character. And so is there gonna be a disconnect when a girl reader is reading this boy character and it's talking about you? but we can see kind of a boy character on the page. That's a really good question. I've only read, read it with my sons, never with my daughter. So we'll see, cause she's a baby. She can't tell me what she's thinking. I can tell she's thinking a lot, but just don't know what it is yet. Um, so I would say a little bit more experimental. We can do it in literary fiction. We can do it in, uh, we can do it in middle grade, young adult, kind of some of these more uh, general categories, uh, maybe romance, erotica would be really interesting. I don't know, It's it has to be a choice that has a reason behind it. It has to be a choice that makes sense. And that's what you're gonna hear with any, I, I posted a video earlier on kind of less uh, mainstream storytelling choices and when you can do them and when you should do them. And that may be interesting watching as a companion to this video, but it is very polarizing. So if you're going to make this choice, you need to know like, okay, I'm probably going to hear about it as a reason for rejection, but there might be that person out there who absolutely loves it. And there are examples that have sort of paved the way for you if you want to make the you choice. Now, I also see it in manuscripts that are written in first or third person where it's kind of the general you. It's like, you know how it goes with moving, it's the worst or whatever. It's like, or um, when you order a coffee and they get your name wrong. So kind of for generalizations, I find that in first or third person, suddenly going into the second person, suddenly calling out the you, or it could be like an intrusive narrator saying like, you know what I mean, dear reader, you know, addressing the reader, breaking the fourth wall. Again, there needs to be a reason for that choice. When you're sloppy about it and it's just a generalization, like you, you know how it goes when you're getting coffee and they get your name wrong. That's a generalization. It's a general statement. It could easily be done in first or third person. I hate it when they get my name wrong when I'm getting coffee, or she hated it when they got her name wrong when she was getting coffee. That to me is a lot less intrusive than the you. So for generalizations, I would try to avoid the you, especially if it kind of pops in and out, it's not consistent. If you have an intrusive narrator in first or third person and they break the fourth wall, make sure you do it consistently, make sure there's a good reason, and make sure that the narrative voice just carries throughout rather than like you on page 50 and you on page 349 and that's the only time it appears it can really pull the reader out of the story make them remember that they're reading you know being the, the fourth wall being broken and being called out in a book can be jarring unless it's done for a reason unless it's done consistently and unless it's done for a specific effect so i would say you can use the second person direct address, but don't make it sloppy. Don't use it for generalizations. And there has to be a really strong reason for that choice. Do you hear me?
<laughs> this is Mary Cole with Good Story Company. Here's to a good story, you writer. Thank you.